Hello and welcome to today's video about graphics, especially arcade cabinet artwork, which you can see here right now on this picture. They have their origin, like the machines themselves, somewhere in the 80s, 90s, uh, where these machines were all around. So today there's a kind of revival uh, and machines coming up and uh, also there's a community which builds their own machines and by doing so they want we want to recreate the original feeling by also attaching nice graphics as this was the case before. So this ends up with the question how uh, those graphics can be found and utilized and there's especially a huge issue when it comes to uh, quality of these uh, images. So but first things first because uh, what's really easy nowadays is uh, to go somewhere on Google have a search and you can end up finding tons of, of graphics whatever for each uh, kind of cabinet and game and whatsoever. The real issue here is, as I said before, the quality. And this comes by the reason that all of these graphics are basically in so-called raster graphic graphics or pixel graphics. The nature of these uh, graphics is that they are made up of columns and rows of, of colored dots, points, pixels. Uh, and and once you scale up those graphics you scale up also these dots or pixels and you end up with a nasty image with low quality where you can see this this step like uh, um, impressions artifacts uh, which don't really look very professional and nice you can of course use uh, some filters for smoothing out that stuff but then it looks again blurry and you end up with a, a different low quality so said that there's a solution to this thing which is called vectorization so there's an easy and and not really costly uh, process that everyone can do uh, to to transfer those raster graphics in what's called a vector graphic and the very difference between the nature of the one and the other is that raster graphics or, or sorry not raster graphics but uh, vector graphics are made up of of lines and curves uh, that encloses areas of color and those lines and curves scale up easily without getting any of the issues with pixelating or something like that or blurriness or whatsoever so if you are in a situation like that that you have a, a tiny relatively small raster graphic and you want to blow it up uh, to the size of a full cabinet which is maybe six foot tall or whatsoever then vectorization is the thing that you want to do and it's as already mentioned it's not very costly the tools available to do the job for you uh, for free and doing so is not much of an effort and that's the purpose of this video to give you a short overview about the process and the tool i don't go through each and every tool I, i'm pretty sure there are tons of commercial stuff out there also freeware i just give you an example by the tool that i use and this is a free uh, you, uh, tool uh, you can see here already uh, on the screen it goes by the name inkscape it, do it doesn't cost you anything it's free for download uh, you found it on the sites of inkscape.org uh, don't let you get confused by this German overview it's also available in English no issue here now you have the English version of the of this site and you have a download area and you can here go to the current version and it's pretty easy self explaining it's just like any other software just download it install it as you used to do with other stuff i don't want to bore you with the installation process as i've done already here on my machine locally once you installed it and you start it up then you end up with this user interface of inkscape pretty easy nothing special you have here a menu some toolbars and the most important thing that you need here is the file section where you have an import and now you be what we do here is basically we go to these raster graphic it's a jpeg uh, there are other formats that are raster based or pixel based like bitmap or whatsoever and there are tons of different graphic uh, types uh, are supported here as you can see from these uh, uh, file type uh, element here so we select one example it's a centipede that i just prepared as an illustration as an example so to say and place it like here and you can see it's relatively small and uh, it's still an, an raster graphic of course it's not yet converted just uh, the import gives you just the, 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 the real nature which is still raster and I, I scale it up a little bit uh, not for the purpose of, of printing or whatsoever just just to have a better view on it while we're working with it so 
said that uh, we almost ready for uh, transferring or uh, put it process it uh, into a, a, a vector graphic what we need to do is we have to make sure that the picture is selected so we can indi uh, um, uh, see an indication for the selection by these uh, border around and these arrows. If it's not the case, just make a an left click with the mouse uh, into the graphic. And the next thing is have a right click in the graphic and now a context menu comes up. As you can see here, right in the middle of the context menu, there's a function called trace bitmap. And that's exactly what we're looking for. This is the one that does the job for us to, to transfer it from, from vector, uh, sorry, from, from raster into vector. So uh, there are some things that we can parameterize here. Uh, we can ignore the upper half of these parameters. We go with the lower half, so to say. We, we want to create a colored image. And the nice thing here with the vectorization is that we can limit the number of, of colors that shall be used here. And this is a little bit of homework we need to do uh, in advance. We have just have a look on the graphic and find out what colors are really used here. And uh, I think I counted, or oh, let's go through it together for ease. So what we have here is white as a background, black and four contour, then we have this green, three, then we have yellow, four, we have red, five, blue, six, and there's a kind of orange, seven, and this pink is eight. Okay. So eight colors, but white is a kind of background color and we want to have the, the white background removed. Why? Because maybe we want to apply the graphics net on a white background on a, of a white cabinet. Maybe we want to have a background that is black or any other color. And then it's good to have a transparent background. And this is what, what is basically the setting here. And if so, we need to decrease the number of colors by one, the background color. So we end up with seven. Okay, next thing that we want to have set in these parameters is stack scans. This is a nice thing. First of all, it increases the overall quality of the result. It's much cleaner. Uh, if you like, you can play around with the settings, of course, not, not a big of a deal. Uh, it, it's a re relatively easy process. But uh, from, from my perspective, stack scans uh, has a better, better quality result. One thing, second thing is that each of these color channels, seven colors, will have its, its own element when they stacked one layer on each other. And this is a nice thing because it, it, it's easy to adjust the colors after the process. So if we're not happy with the black because it may be a more dark gray or something like that, then we can adjust just that color layer by changing the color of that layer and not going through each and every pixel or whatever. Uh, what else? We don't want to have a smoothing option here activated because uh, uh, this will, how shall I say, eliminate some of the details here because the algorithm is not really capable of differentiate between uh, details that we want to keep like those and, and artifacts and issues of the image. So uh, this is something that does, the algorithm doesn't really handle that well. So we leave it off. We already spoken about the stack scans and remove background. Live preview basically says that we get here in this area of the window of uh, um, impression and preview about the result, which is quite okay. Once these settings are done, we click on OK. Then the OK button uh, disappears for a couple of seconds during the process. And once it comes back, it's done. It's a little bit odd because it's the, the window stays on top. So we, uh, once the OK is back, we need to close the window here. So, and it looks pretty much as nothing has happened, but that's not really the case. Uh, colors have changed a little bit. And if we now go and move that element to the side, then we see we have two quite similar graphics. Let's scroll in a little bit. So and what we have right now on the left side is still the, the, the uh, raster graphic, the original, the source, so to say. On the left side, we have the vectorized graphic. And as you can see here in the details, uh, yeah, it, it lost us a little bit of details. This is uh, 
pretty much the reason be why uh, because the the original graphic is not good enough in the resolution so maybe if you look hard enough you get a better original scan with a higher resolution and then you end up with a better uh, de um, uh, degree of details here in the in the vector graphic but from my taste it's good enough to work with it what we can see right now is that the colors a little bit off uh, it, it looked a little bit uh, washed out, so to say. The green is a little bit uh, uh, brighter and, and the yellow is not as bright as there. And the good thing is, as I already mentioned before, that we can easily adjust each of the color uh, channels as, as we like. Uh, let's see, what can we do? We can select here with, within the graphic. Uh, this is an important thing. We when we click once here on the element uh, we're not really in the layer so maybe we need to have a double click first oh that's one too much uh, we are sure that uh, this layer is selected once we have the color of the layer it's, uh, visible here let's go back so not red not yet i have to double click i guess and then a single click yes so first a double click to go inside this uh, collection of elements the, basically the seven different color layers and once we are inside we do one single click again and then we have here the color where we clicked and then we are sure that we are on this layer uh, to give you a better understanding of what this stack color layers means uh, just give you a short demonstration here if i now move the black one you get the idea so you have each and every color as a separate layer and and so we can change the color of each layer easily let's undo this quickly and uh, keep the the black uh, contour layer selected we can easily see it here by by the selected color here on the button in this area and what we can do right now is just by by using any of the colors in this color palette here or using this color tool on the left pane uh, we can adjust the color and maybe we don't we are not quite happy with this uh, dark gray it looks a little bit uh, washed out so let's click here on a clear black color and as you can see it looks much better right now just as easy as that and as we did with the, the black contour we can do with basically any of the colors here let's go with the red one it's also a little bit washed out and as uh, to be sure here we have now red on the button and we can adjust the, the red by either uh, using one of the predefined colors let's do this as a quick thing it's a little bit too intense maybe and uh, as before you can use this uh, color wheels here maybe we want to reduce the brightness a bit nah. so we can maybe go more into yellowish orange it's a little bit too much this this is quite a nice color i think and pretty much the same with the green maybe it's also a little bit washed out just make sure double check before you change the color that you're right in the, in the right color pane by looking here so and maybe we can also it intensify a little bit here clean up the color let's see if we can find something oh yeah that's 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 great much much closer to the orig original and uh, i think also we have the look on the yellow yellowish maybe a little bit more brightness nah, not really more color intensity no what is wrong here yeah i think that it's that's that's a fine one so the blue looks quite good as it is close to the original color nevertheless if we would like we can we can also do some adjustments enhancements more intense blue that's good and then here the pink let's see what we can do here maybe also go a little bit more in this direction yeah looks looks great for me let's let's zoom out and compare the two images does it look great? I, I personally prefer now the color uh, scheme or the color settings much more from our vector graphic as it is in the original uh, raster graphics. 
And not only that, as mentioned before, we, we are now really able, give me a second, let's remove, uh, now we need to make sure that we select all the paints, all the color paints at once, and, and now we are really able to scale it up to whatever scale we want, 10 times of the original size, whatever, uh, that's a little bit too wide, and if we go back, zoom in, do you see how smooth this, this uh, contour is here? No pixels whatsoever. And that's the really benefit of having graphics vectorized. As easy like that. So if you're in a CAD graphics or any, any similar art of uh, type of uh, artwork, uh, I really recommend uh, to, to make the utilization of this vector style type. Uh, and as, as said before, this Inkscape is free for use, and not costs, and, and also the efforts for vectorization are not really great. Uh, so I recommend to you this uh, kind of uh, graphic type, uh, maybe it's new to you, and I hope you find it interesting. Uh, and that's it for today. Uh, thank you for listening and goodbye.